Engineer man here. Time to learn about character arrays and C strings. No time to waste. Let's do this. Today's video level is beginner. I'm making no assumptions today with this video. So what is a character array? A character array is exactly what it sounds like. It's an array of characters. Depending on how you declare these, they can either be string literals in read-only memory, they could be string literals that initialize character arrays on the stack, or arbitrary length arrays allocate on the heap, which you can then manipulate. C does not have a string type, though, but it does have functions to manipulate strings. But wait a second, that sounds contradictory. If there is no string type, then why would there be functions to manipulate strings? Well, in C character arrays, there's a special character called a null byte, and it's denoted by a backslash zero. If your character array has a null byte in it, and in most cases it should, that character array can be thought of kind of like a string, where the string is all the characters in the character array up to, but not including the null byte character. All C string functions that read and manipulate character arrays expect that null byte to be there. And bad things can happen if one is not present. For instance, if you were to call string len on a character array without a null byte, it's going to cause it to read the whole array and then keep reading memory, which it doesn't have access to, until it eventually finds a null byte somewhere in the memory, or the program crashes, or worse. Let's look at some examples. So the first thing is just a single character. It's actually an integer type. When you do char letter and then you do a single quote, what you're saying is give me the integer version of that letter. And that comes right from the ASCII chart. So this would be actually a 65. You know, B would be 66, C, 67, and so on. Next one is a string literal. It's stored as read-only data. When you declare it like this, name one is a pointer to character, it takes this string literal, it stores it in read-only data, and then it gives you a pointer to the first letter in that string, so the E. You cannot change this because it's hard-coded in the actual read-only memory. Next one is a character array initialized from a string literal, copied to and stored on the stack. This is very similar. Name2 is very similar to name1, except you can edit this later in your program, and there's a reason for that. If we skip down to name3, it's actually identical to name2. What it does is it takes the string literal, which is read-only data, and then it uses it to create the following character array, which is stored on the stack rather than in read-only data. Therefore, you can manipulate name3 with no problem, because you never actually touch any read-only data. So with name4, I've created a character array with 128 elements, and it's stored on the stack. I, I picked a very large number because I wanted you to see what happens when you use a null terminator for the first time. So what I'm doing here on 22 is I'm copying string literal engineer man into name4. Now string copy will automatically add a null byte at the end, so it copies 12 bytes into name4, and then it also copies the null terminator. So if I were to print name4 out, I would get the full string engineer man. Excellent. If I call string length on name4, it's going to be 12, because what it's doing is it's counting up till the null byte. It doesn't matter that this character array is 128 elements long, because remember, the string functions in C only go up to where the null byte is. So in this case, it'd be 12. As far as accessing elements in character arrays, there's several ways you can do this. Primarily, it would be picking the name and then subscripting it with an index. And then that would give you that letter. However, this is really just an alias. In the format of array bracket index bracket, that's actually expanded to array plus index, which is pointer arithmetic, and then it's dereferencing that, that pointer. So this is going to be identical to this. And because of the way it does it, you now have this weird syntax. You can actually reverse name four in the index because that's going to expand to this, which is functionally equivalent to this. I don't recommend using these three unless you have a special use. You can, you can stick to this top one, and that's perfectly fine. 
But what this does is that accesses the, the element at index zero. And if you want to modify it, it's the exact same thing as reading it, except you provide it the new character. And remember, it's an integer type, so I'm using single quotes. So this actually assigns number, whatever the number is for a dash. And then now it's changed. If I were to output name four, I would get engineer dash man. And finally, if I want to change the boundary of the string, just to show you that that works, I'm, I can change that dash from a dash to a null byte. And then if I were to output name four again, I would just get engineer. And if I were to do the string length, I would just get eight. And that's because it only reads up until that null, boy, null byte and nothing afterwards. And that's it. Hopefully everyone is smart having watched this video. If I forgot to cover something or you'd like to request a video, post a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. See you next time.